द मोस्ट एडवांस मालवे इन द हिस्ट्री येस टूडे वील बी गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द स्ट्रक्स नेट टिल नाउ देर इज नो एविडेंस बट दिस मालवे इज बिलीव टू हैव बीन क्रिएट बाय द यू एस एंड इसराइल इंटेलिजेंस एजेंसी एंड दिस वॉज डिजाइन टू अल्टर द पी एल सी विच वॉज यूज इन टू द आई सी एस सो दिस वीडियो इज वेरी अ डिप्ट एनालिसिस ऑफ स्टक्स नेट दीज आर द थिंग्स दैट वी आर गोइंग टू कवर टूडे हु क्रिएटेड स्टक्स नेट वट वॉज द प्राइमरी टारगेट ऑफ स्टक्स नेट वट वॉज द पर्पज ऑफ स्टक्स नेट दैन विल गो थ्रू द मोडस ऑफ ट्रेंडी सोर्स कोड एंड डॉक्यूमेंट्री सो दिस वीडियो विल बी गोइंग टू लिटिल विट लॉन्गर बट I can guarantee this will be a very much fruitful for the people those who are into cyber security and malware analysis. So let's get right into the it. So first question always arises is who created Stuxnet? So it's now widely accepted that Stuxnet was created by the intelligence agency of US and Israel. The classified program to develop the worm was given the code name called Olympic Games and it was began under the presidency of George W Bush and uh, continues under the presidency of Obama while neither government has ever officially acknowledged the development of Stuxnet because this is very controversial thing but in late 2011 there was a video created to celebrate the retirement of Israel Defense Force gabi and in that video they listed stuxnet as one of the successful under his watch so till 2011 there was no evidence there was nothing who created stuxnet but at the time of retirement of uh, the defense force head gabi they said like it was one of the greatest success in their tenure and at that time was knows about who created stuxnet because this was one of the most destructive thing that man ever human life ever felt out so the individual engineers behind stuxnet haven't been identified but we all are damn sure that they were highly skilled and that there was a lot of them so kaspers lab which is from uh, which is a russian company i believe so kaspers lab uh, researchers called royal they estimated that it took a team of 10 coders and 2 or 3 years to create a worm in its final form so this is the person those who had find out about the team members those who done a little bit uh, you can say reverse engineering and they found like as per the conspiracy theories uh, we just heard about this is the person the kaspers lab was the team that's those who found like there was a malware that was injected into the iran nuclear fusion and so i guess is russian hackers are really very skillful like they are the only person those who found this thing so there was something more about like several other worms with the infection capabilities similar to stuxnet including those who dubbed as duku and flame have been identified in the wild and all together their purposes are quite different than stuxnet but their similarity to stuxnet lead expert to believe that they are produced of the same developments of which is apparently still active so it was said that this two malware was also created from the same team those who created stuxnet after the compilation of all the stuffs like stuxnet duku and flame uh, about the operations about the working scenarios of all these stuff it was found that it was uh, from the same company those who created stuxnet now what was the primary target of this stuxnet so stuxnet is basically designed to alter the plc okay this is the plc plc is basically means programmable logic control and plc are the commonly used in the facilities such as power plant water treatment facilities and gas pipelines so in this case they have targeted a plc that was used in the type of ICS which is called industrial control system and the working of the malware was developed on exploiting zero day vulnerability in the infected computers so zero day vulnerability basically means a vulnerability which exists in a system and doesn't come into the existence of uh, normal internet like the vulnerability exists but the things is not available for each and everyone and the malware was basically 
found mainly targeting the ICS in Iran, Indonesia and India during 2007. Like uh, most of you think of like Stuxnet was targeted the Iran nuclear plant. But why you are saying Iran, uh, India and other countries? Because in 2017, there are, there are some more theories like this thing has been found in India as well, some more places as well. So at that situation, Stuxnet effect was felt most strongly in Iran and as earlier as 2007, where over 60% of the infection were located, many experts believe that Stuxnet destroyed over 1,000 centrifuges in the Iran nuclear facility at Natanz. So as I told you, this is the PLC that is used into the ICS industrial control system. This is, I guess, this is system of SCADA, okay, which is called supervisory control and data acquisitions. Now the next thing is what was the purpose of Stuxnet but before getting into it let's have a little bit more insight about uh, the purpose uh, of Stuxnet. So the US and Israel government intended Stuxnet as a tool to derail or at least delay the Iranian program to develop nuclear weapon. The Bush and Obama administrator believed that if Iran were on the verge of developing atomic weapon, Israel would launch air strike against Iran nuclear facilities in a move that could have set off a regional war. So Operation Olympic Games was seen as a non-violence alternative and although it wasn't clear that such a cyber break on physical infrastructure was ever possible. So there was a dramatic meeting in the White House Situation Room late in the Bush presidency during which piece of a destroyed test centrifugals were spread out on a conference table and it was at the point that the US gave the go ahead to unleash the malware. So at that time basically the Stuxnet was never intended to spray beyond the Iranian nuclear facility as Natanz and the facility was air gapped and non connected to the internet so air gap basically means the system which is isolated and the thing th that that is working with the internal computers and uh, also that means that it has to be infected by the usb stick transported inside by the intelligence agents to unlink dupes and but also mean the infection should have been easy to contain however the malware did end up on internet connected computers and begin to spray in the world due to its extremely sophisticated and aggressive nature and although as noted it did little damage to outside computer it infected and many in the us believe that spray was the result of the code modified made by the israeli then vice president biden was said to be particularly upset about this now let's learn a little bit about the modus operandi of uh, this particular Stuxnet. So when it uh, basically when the Stuxnet infect a computer, Stuxnet check whether the computer is connected to the specific model of PLCs which is manufactured by Simons. Okay, the malware look out the Simons Step Seven software that is used to control the PLC. And once it locates the malware with step 7, Stuxnet began to infect or inject false information to the PLC and thereby intercepting the actual data generated based on the false information injected. So PLC reported a false operation states back to the step 7 in order to show that the machines are operating normally. The worm is designed to spray through air gap network and it is typically distributed to the targeted environment via infected USB drive or any other external devices. So in that situation, like as we all know, the system, the Iranian nuclear plant was uh, having air gap system, which means uh, it is not connected with the external internet. So it is only possible to inject a pen drive, inject this malware through a pen drive and then it, it may work. So this is the particular steps in which how the Stuxnet work. So in first, there was the infection. They injected the pen drive into the particular system where they need to uh, inject. Then there was a search phase where the Stuxnet then check whether a given machine is a part of targeted ICS made by the Simons. 
and uh, which may such as deployed in the Iran to run high speed centrifuges that helps to enrich nuclear fuel. And then the update procedure was there like if there will be system isn't targeted, Stuxnet does nothing. And if it is, the worm attempt to access the internet and download the more recent version of itself. Then step 4 is the compromisation form. The worm then compromised the target system logical controller exploiting zero vulnerability software weakness that haven't been identified by the security expert. Now the in section 5, control section, in the beginning, Stuxnet spies on the operations of the targeted system. Then it used the information it has gathered to take control of the centrifugal, making them spin themselves to failure. And at last, it decide and destroy. So meanwhile, it provides false feedback to the outdated controller, ensuring that they wouldn't know what is going wrong until it is too late to do anything about it. So there is some sort of controversy in, on Stuxnet source code as well. There's a lot of repository on GitHub. They are claiming that they are having the source code of Stuxnet. And a lot of persons are using and analyzing as well. But there was a person who is called uh, Liam or Munchu. So he is the director of the security technology and uh, response group of Symantec. And was on the team there was first unreal, unrevealed Stuxnet. So he is one of the team members, those who unreveal the Stuxnet and also says that the Stuxnet was by far the most complex piece of code that we have looked at and in a complexity different click from anything that we have seen before. And while you can find lot of website that claim to have the Stuxnet code available to download, Omunchu says you shouldn't believe them. He emphasizes to CSO that the original source code of the worm as written by the coders working in the US and Israel intelligence hadn't released or leaked and can't extract it from the bindings that was loose in the wild and the code for one driver a very small part of the overall package and have been rec reconstructed by reverse engineering but that's not the same as having as original code and however he explained that a lot of about code could be understood from the examining the binary in action and reverse engineering it. For instance, he says it was pretty obvious from the first time we analyzed the app that it was looking for some Siemens equipment and eventually after 3 to 6 months of reverse engineering, we were able to determine and I would say 99% of everything that happened in the code. So this was the O Murchu that said in the statement as well. And it is very exciting that we had made this breakthrough. He added further and also added that, um, but then we realized realized that we had got ourselves into probably an international espionage operation, and that was quite scary. So Symantec released this for information on September of 2010, and analyzes an analyst in the West had known since the end of 2009 that. The Iran has been having problem with their centrifugals, but only knows understood why. So this is the thing, uh, this which means that there is no code available online. And after proper research, this person can say about the 99% about that particular source code. And the code was uh, actually looking for the uh, some sort of uh, what you say. Uh, device edge which is uh, which is uh, the equipment which is related to simon's company and there's a lot of statement available on the internet you can read from there as well and uh, at last the stuxnet documentary so this is a person whose name is alex gibne so alex gibne is the oscar nominated doc documentarian behind the film intron which is one of the famous till now and the smallest guy Enron full name is the smallest guy in the room and the going clear so this is a person who directed a, movie, directed a movie called Zero Day, which explains the history of Stuxnet discovered and its impact on relation between Iran and the West. So Zero Day include interview of the O Munchu and some of his colleges and basically this is available on YouTube as well, you can search for it. And O, o Munchu, Munchu is the person those who analyze the Stuxnet. So you may get a lot of brief from there. 
and one dramatic scene in this movie sequ- uh, and one dramatic sequence in the movie shows how semantic team managed to drive home stuxnet ability to wreak real world havoc so they program a simon plc to infiltrate a balloon they infected the pc it was controlled by with the stuxnet and the result was dramatic despite only being programmed to infiltrate the balloon for 5 seconds the controller kept pumping air into until it burst so the destruction of the iranian u- u- uranium centrifuges which follows the same logic and they were spun too quickly and destroyed themselves so and was perhaps less visually exciting but was ultimately just a dramatic so as the documentary explain we now live in a world where the computer malware code is causing destruction at a physical level and it is irreversible that we'll see more into the future so that's all about this video i hope you enjoy it and learn something new so there may be a lot of uh, right now there's a lot of uh, malware news is also coming over there which is related to the russia ukraine things so what do you think uh, there is some uh, there may be some sort of stuxnet related malware it still exist or the time has been ended up please comment your feedback about this video and should we continue this kind of video in future as well so thank you for watching this video till the last have a great day jai hind